Welcome to Draw One Last Breath Horror Podcast. My name's Matt. I'm Butch. I'm Jolly Paul. Welcome to episode 126. On this episode, we have been to the cinema to watch Pearl. In our Something to Scream About, we will be talking about the In Search of Darkness, years 88, 89 documentary. And I picked from the movie from the vault last time, April Fool's Day from 1986. Very well. Are you? I apologise if there's loads of noise in the background. It's my son, and he is unruly. <laughs> and will be murdered after this podcast. <laughs> Damien! That's, that's, ev- that's evidence. <laughs> oh, God, crack it off. It's been a good... Right, I'm going to kick it off. Right, well, I've, I've been watching some stuff. I've been watching some stuff. Um, just some bits and bobs. Um, finish, ser- finish Servant. Uh, very oh, yeah. yeah finish that a fucking awesome episode M. Night Shyamalan come on and actually directed the second from last episode um, it was just it was a great finish I'll miss it because it's fin- apparently it's over now so that's a shame so four seasons and done the nice tight episodes Paul as well like you know 25 to 26 minutes it's really easy to get into um, watched something called Night Flyers started watching on um netflix it's a couple of years old and i don't know why the reason i bring it up is because we did event horizon a couple of episodes ago and it just reminds me of that it reminds me of a sort of um longer event horizon they're in space um there's some weird psychotic things going on flashes gore technology and blood it's very interesting and i feel like the first scene was very event horizon so yeah, it's 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 about it's a, it's a one shot. It's not it's one season by looks of things, about ten episodes, but they're quite long. So, but worth a shot. Um, I watched a film called Viking Wolf. Can't remember if any of you recommended that. Viking Wolf. <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know what to say about this. Um, <laughs> it's on Netflix. Uh, it's uh, aware about werewolves and. Uh, Vikings, Bionic Shots? <laughs> yeah. It's definitely like a Nor it's a Nor it's set in Norway. It's like a Nordic sort of like folklore around the werewolves and stuff like that. Um it was a very T V horror movie, but not in a bad way. Production values, mm, CGI wolf, that sort of thing. So nothing like major redeeming, but it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. Um, <laughs> You're not selling it. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I watched Tammy and the T Rex. Oh, I did you finally watch it? Yeah, I mean, one hundred and one. Whoo, whoo, whoo. I mean, I don't know what to think. I mean, I can understand the charm of it. Um, young Paul Walker and young Denise Richards. They're like first fucking. They're, they're like first movie basically. Um, and it's just the idea behind it. It's just like from what I've like read was they had a dinosaur and then they just wanted to make a movie because they had this dinosaur and the dinosaur is just terrible. And there's some really sort of 90s awful like CGI moments as well with it. Um, oh, it's so bad, which makes it very, very good because it's so <laughs> bad. Um yeah, it, it's definitely, it's just bonkers. It is absolutely bonkers, and, and I would watch it again, because <laughs> it's just weird. So, yeah, I'm happy I got to see that. Um, I watched Gateway Horror, Christopher Landon's new movie. It did Freaky and um, Happy Death Day, and Happy Death Day to You, and all those sorts of movies. We Have a Ghost with Anthony Mackie and David Harbour, that's on Netflix. Fun, fun, fun for all the family. Very thoroughly, I, I did enjoy this one. It wasn't like bl- blow my socks off, but it was a fun gateway horror movie. Really, really strong to watch with the family. I definitely recommend go watch that. I also watched another Groundhog Day. You know, we, we watched that um, one with Andy Samberg. Do you remember Palm Springs? Palm Springs. Yeah. Palm, yeah. There's Reed. another one like that called Meet Cute. And it stars Penny from Big Bang Theory and um, Pete Davidson. And I avoided it for easy, thinking it's going to be some really ropey rom-com. But it's quite dark. It is actually quite dark. It's tw- It's got a bit of twist. It's quite twisted. And it sort of follows that 
sort of Groundhog Day motif. Definitely uh, one to w- worth a watch, I reckon. That's on Amazon Prime. So, um, yeah, not, not bad. Not bad for me. Good couple of bits. What about you, Mr. Kartner? I've watched nothing. Okay. You not watched um, any more Servant yet? No. Nope. I, I, uh, yeah, it's just been a bit of a crazy two weeks. I don't really watch. I don't think I've watched anything, really. Um, no, I haven't. All right. <laughs> <I'm>, I apologise. <laughs> I'll just, you did yeah. it's fine last episode you smashed it so it's like <laughs> sorry about that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Paul, I've, watched, what you been I've watched quite a bit I mean I'm getting in a bit of the groove now whether it's, I just don't sleep anymore so I've, I've watched quite a lot um, <laughs> some of it's absolute tosh though so I watched uh, it's dropped on Netflix so I thought I'd give it a go oh no Amazon Prime sorry uh, Godzilla vs Kong what the shite. new one yeah shite I loved it Fine. Oh my god, they're just all. <laughs> I mean, uh, how the hell the actors kept a straight face while saying some of the lines? I have no idea, but yeah, no, didn't like it. Um, Monsters Inc. I watched Monsters Inc. with the little ins. Lovely Classic. gateway horror there. <laughs> yeah, loved it. Um, watched Us with the Misses. The Misses has never seen it, so Ooh. we put that on, and she absolutely loved it. She thought it was brilliant. Um, and yeah, it just gets better with every watch that film, to be honest. So yeah. Uh, so right, so now for some of the new stuff that I've never seen before. I watched a, a little film, film four. I tell you, late night film four films. They just keep sort of there's some decent stuff on there. Uh, have you ever seen a film called F? Yes, F. F. The letter F. No, nope. I have seen it. Yeah, so it's set in a. It's a British film set in a comprehensive school where basically uh, a teacher and his daughter and some security guards and stuff get stuck in a secondary school where mental teenagers are chasing them and stalking them and trying to kill them and killing them and and uh yeah i sort of got sucked into it and i i it was a run of the mill and i think i gave it it gained a couple of stars on letterboxd for the ending which was bleak as book so definitely worth checking out probably never saying i think you actually quite like it so i literally what i literally recorded that off of uh channel four film four like years and years ago yeah. So funny you said that because literally I've seen it. That's where I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> so you can keep recycling it. Uh, but yeah, that no, was all right. Worth a watch. Uh, right. Now, I watched The Boston Strangler on Disney Plus. Is that a TV show? No, oh, it's cool. a film. Oh, it's a uh, film. I thought Keira it was a Knightley, um, oh, Carrie Coon, who was in uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife. Yep. And uh, it's got Chris Cooper. It's got a decent cast. It's okay. It's good. Decent. Hour and a half put your brain on the, the floor but based on actual events it's actually, it's actually all right i'm not going to reveal who the guy is or the actor playing the guy because uh, spoil it but it was decent so definitely worth watching disney plus um i watched on shudder i watched i've seen this i was interested by the graphic on it and i sort of read it and i thought i'll oh, just give it a go it stains the sand red ah well, so me and you butch were on about this ages ago we talked about it on the pod and everything yeah, we were the, really interested in watching it and then we it's just the zombie one where she's like following him really slowly is that right through the desert yeah so it's basically yeah it's, it's on the eve of the other as the zombie apocalypse is happening and a woman stuff happens and basically she's getting chased by a zombie and she sort of thinks she's getting away but then realizes that the zombie doesn't get tired or need aid or stop or anything so just keeps catching her um and yeah she's sort of trying to get away and trying to get like to where she's supposed to be going um there were bits of it i absolutely thought were incredible absolutely incredible then there were bits of it that it, i just didn't know if it knew what it wanted to be it started a very dark and very sort of sinister and then it went into a bit of comedy um and then it went dark again and then went a bit of comedy and then it was a bit all over the place but really strong performance by the central character the the, the woman um and some decent effects. You can tell it was quite low budget, but it's it's worth a watch. I think you you, you would get a kick out of it. So it's definitely definitely a decent concept and a bit of a variation on the zombie sort of drama. But bits of it were just a bit too silly. <laughs> but yeah, um, it was quite good. Um, and then finally, I watched Infinity Pool, which I'm not really going to talk too much about, just in case we do it on a future pod. But yeah, that is definitely <laughs> worth a watch and a discussion about. I've been waiting for it forever. Okay, I think we will be 
watching that very soon. <laughs> what is it with Mia Goth films that they're just like they just don't want to bring them out like out out? <laughs> Well, it's been it's been shown in, in Ireland in sort of select theatres, like smaller theatres. It's it hasn't been shown in any major uh, things. Um, but it's yeah, Guard Guard as well, isn't it? So yeah, it's it's worth a watch, guys, just to talk about it. Um, I'm not really going to give you anything away if I enjoyed it or if I didn't enjoy it or whatever. But yeah, we definitely need to have a discussion at some point about it. Cool. Mm-hmm. All right, then let's uh, get on to some newsy, newsy news hounds. So Matt. I'm going to go first this week for a change because I never go first. So <laughs> um, talking uh, about uh, kind of like Cronenbergian films. Um, up next from David Cronenberg is The Shrouds. Uh, Cronenberg's next movie is currently scheduled to begin filming in May 2023. Filming is set to begin on May the 8th in Toronto and as we recently learned, uh, Vincent Cassell is going to be on board with it, along with Diane Kruger and Guy Pearce. So apparently uh, Cassell will, be, uh, will play uh, Karsh, an innovative businessman and grieving widower who builds a novel device to connect with the dead inside a burial shroud. This burial tool installed at his own state-of-the-art, though controversial, cemetery allows him and his clients to watch their specific departed loved one decompose in real time. Fucked up. Yeah, Jesus I mean, Christ. Yeah, but like, <laughs> I thought that about the last one, and then it was like, it, that was a bit of a, a miss for me. What was it? I can't even remember what, they, what it was called. Rhymes of the Future, is it? Yeah, that was a bit of a miss for me. It had moments, but it was too... I hadn't pushed anything. It was too existence for me. But anyway, I don't know. Cool, we'll see. All right, well, I got one. Uh, I watched a trailer, The Black Demon. Um, it's new shark, kind of a shark, dark, a dark shark movie set on an oil rig. Um, like a basically an oil man takes his family um, to basically this oil rig that's kind of like uh, abandoned and they don't know why. And there's a lot of cool shots in it from the the thing, the, you know, the shark that is actually sort of instigated why all these these people from the oil rig are no longer there. It's it's not it's not like a supernatural shark; it's an actual shark, but it's a big fucker. Um, I'm I'm down for another shark movie, but it just looks very creepy. More, um, I don't know. It's sort of less Meg. Hang on, isn't this the one I sent the photo to of the poster, and then Jordy Paul said, "Looks shit." <laughs> I, I yeah. Like, <laughs> the look, the look at, I don't know what you're on about. I think the trailer looks really cool. Um, it looks based really on the good Mexican guy. legend, apparently. I'm all for it. So, and it's there's also it's, it's a foreign no, film, right? Is it, is it foreign film? I don't know. I don't. Oh, know. No, don't it's got know. um, it's got the guy who's in um. Pitch Black, the the bad guy in Pitch Black. Oh. I generally like the look of it. I, I like the look of it. I could be all right. The Meg, the Meg Two is out later this year. The trench. The trench. And I heard that you know that someone here is a big fan. Not really. <laughs> hey, someone waiting with bated breath. I heard that. I heard that there's not just a big fucking shark in it. The fact that Ben Wheatley's directing it right is very very intriguing. Very interesting. I still can't find. I still can't get me around that. <laughs> it it's must be like be it must inspired. be something else that you do. You do Meg the trench, and then you can have all the money in the world to do whatever you like with. He don't, sure. need, he don't need a lot of money. He does better with none. So right, I'm talking like big, big though. I keep imagining it's just going to be like the Meg eats Jason Statham in the first five seconds, right? And then Jason Statham creates this like life inside the shark's belly and all this type yeah, of shit. Uh, five stars. Five stars. Yeah. Ten <laughs> breaths out of ten. Well, I, I don't know if they're going down the book route because obviously there's four books or something like that. So I don't know. Maybe the second one's darker. We shall see. All right, go on and lay it down on us, Paul. What have you got? Um, yeah, not a tons, to be honest, guys. Um, Linda Blair has been confirmed as being back as Reagan in the new Exorcist film. So I know her mother, is it Ellen Bernstein, was confirmed to be in it, playing obviously Reagan's mother, but actually Reagan's in it as well. So it'd be so interesting to see. So didn't she 
she was the mum in the TV series, right? As well. Like I remember seeing the TV series, which is she's obviously the mum in The Exorcist. So this is a direct. It's a direct sequel, isn't it, to The Exorcist one? That's what they say. So look forward to it. <laughs> with bated breath. Um, yeah. Did you have anything else? I've only got a couple, a couple of bits. I didn't know. I'm all done. No, I'm all done. So uh, just a couple of things. The Fall uh, has been a massive success on Netflix. If you haven't seen it, please watch it on the biggest screen you can. But The Fall, so apparently they're doing a sequel. <laughs> I have no idea what the sequel will, will involve. But apparently it's in the works with Netflix because it's been such a... Uh, massive hit on it. Massive streaming hit. Which um, yeah, a second one. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Literally have no idea, but... There you Why go. Not? Um, Mike Flanagan uh, has um, basically just been talking about his Dark Tower adaptation, saying that he wants to bring all as many characters in from his universes as possible, which include Doctor Sleep characters. He reckons they'll fit nicely in, and he would love to get like Rebecca Ferguson and stuff back. So, a bit of Dark Tower news, whenever if ever it happens. And then the last bit is Jordan Peele's new film is to not not that we know what it is, but it's gonna be out. Christmas 2024 and apparently it's out the same week now this will change but at the same week as the new Avatar film so that'll be fun oh god <laughs> back on the on the Mike Flanagan bit of news there's another little bit of news about Mike Flanagan that apparently he's trying to bring Clayface uh, into the Batman universe is this Robert, Robert Pattinson's, Pattinson's Batman universe yes, yes. There's this big rumour going around that he's the main villain of the Batman 2. But yeah. then apparently this Flanagan thing is that he, it's like an origin story of Clayface mm. where he's not a bad guy, which I don't want to watch. <laughs> no, I don't want to watch that either. Oh, I, like the Robert, I like the Robert Pattinson Batman. So. Yeah, I thought it was okay. It was quite good. Entertaining. I did read something which is kind of not horror related, but really fucking fun and geeky and cool. Uh, so Edgar Wright, Edgar Wright is back doing Scott Pilgrim versus the world as an anime. And all, all, apparently all actors from the 2010 film are on board to do the voices. Fucking ace. So they did a, they did a whole um, script reading of the yeah. film, didn't they? I don't think all of the cast were there, but most of them were. Which was quite cool. Love that film. Great film. I remember going to cinema and watching it. Fucking great film. You, Butch, I'm pretty sure yeah. I was great with you. Yeah. Alrighty then, let's move on to our main review. times is admirable but you only get one take it this life if only they would just die pardon nothing Zeta! i want to be special dancing up on the screen like the pretty girls in the pictures I will not let you leave this farm again. I'm worried there may be something real wrong with me. Rumor has it they only take one gal per town. We're looking for someone with X Factor. It has to be me. How about a film nobody else has seen? Is it legal? It will be eventually. I know what I've done. Bad things. Terrible, awful, murderous things. Okay, so this week's main review, we have all been to the cinema uh, to watch the prequel to X, uh, which is Pearl. So, uh, brief synopsis. Um, in 1918, a young woman on the brink of madness pursues stardom in a desperate attempt to escape the drudgery, isolation, and lovelessness of life on her parents' farm. 
So obviously we watched X last year. X was a surprise hit. I don't know, better than expected. I don't know, but one of our top ten films of last year. Um, and the prequel obviously sets the events up to this film. What did you think, guys? I mean, if I'd seen this last year, quite this probably would have been in the top ten as well. It top was... five, top five for me. <laughs> I was just from start to finish blown away by again by her because this is let's say this is like the mere but mere goth show we knew from that x that this was happening because they'd said that they had an extra two weeks i think it's a like really short shoot um and he just basically like they had an extra bit of time they had you know a bit of extra budget and they had mere goth and they were like fuck it let's do let's do this and it, she is incredible and learning about the older lady from X, which is Pearl, and seeing her psychotic tendencies was just fucking nuts. But I don't know. I just it was for me. I like to describe it, and as a lot of people have, as uh, as a mix of Wizard of Oz meets Psycho meets Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That's sort of where the way I sort of describe it. But yeah, Matt, what do you think? Um, I loved it from start to finish. I saw this quite a while ago because I was sick and tired of people talking about it all the time and literally I, I i think i might even like it more than x to be fair because i just think it lays so much groundwork for and answers why why this is happening what happens in x and i think it's just superbly done and and like if there was an oscar worthy horror movie of last year this should have been nominated for sure for her performance alone and for his direction skills on the, the low budget that he had cinematography was again to make you feel like you're in a fifth watching sort of like 50s movie from start to finish i thought it was incredible the to- the tones and the colors that he sort of gets and the palette that he's created is just it was stunning to watch mr yeah. stevens did you i i mean i blown away absolutely blown away i mean to think that you know when, when it was announced and we were like "Ooh, really excited that there's a companion piece and you know what he's done with this what two weeks shooting a minimum budget and he's created that that's almost like that almost makes it even better in my eyes like he, don't, don't quote he, me on that timeline but well no but you you felt that well it was in a lockdown wasn't it in a, in a very short space of time anyway to, the fact that two of them have just dreamt up the idea and went oh we'll shoot it it could have just been a straight the look of X could have just mirrored it, but it didn't. It made you feel like uh, the first 20 minutes you think, am I watching a family film? Am I watching Chitty Chitty Bang Bang? Or am I watching like it was so well done that you were just going, I've seen X. I know it's about to come. So at some point this film's going to turn very, very dark. So why do I feel so comfortable in this jolly real surroundings of, of like life and her little like head? And, you know, yes, we do know there's obviously that dark presence at home but she's like skipping about the place like it was and it do you know what it added to the tension because she knew some bad shit's about to go down but it's really uncomfortable in this lovely beautiful bright world that he's created i just thought it was spectacular guys i I really did i absolutely loved it so my little two-week fact was the fact was the collaboration time between ty west and mia goff in the lockdown right. so they collaborated uh, over the, like, the two weeks a uh, two weeks lockdown to sort of come up with the script basically for this she also learned german for this role in a very short space of time so that accent is sort of like something that she's came up with in a very short space of time yeah i mean uh, wow just just stunning i mean obviously you get you going over the plot where she's she's obviously unhinged <laughs> straight you just know there's something off about her She's just got that great thing of when she smiles, she looks as if she's about to murder you. <laughs> that could be the most genuine smile in the world, but you, you, there's definitely some layers under there. Um, and, like, I loved how he shifted the colour. Did you notice the colour change when her mood changed as well? Mm, yeah. Like, the whole environment was from her eyes. And when it started to get a bit rocky, the clouds came over and it darkened. And then when she was a bit happy, the sun came back out and it was all bright and vibrant. I loved it. Oh, my God. <laughs> And I mean, if you're going to do a scary ass scarecrow, fuck me, that scarecrow. <laughs> yeah. it, oh my! God. He got dry humped within an oh, yeah. inch of his life. <laughs> it was just a dark sort of coming of age 
movie looking at someone who's completely isolated and alone and who just wants to escape uh, the drudgery but also has this real level of unhingedness behind it all there's just something not right a parent a mum knows it a dad knows it in his own little way um i mean are we spoiling this little bad boy i'm guessing we are because it's been out in the cinema now and it was late last year so go see it but with the rest of this conversation we're we kind of move on to talk about some of the extra little bits um her dad is sort of like what he's had I don't know what was back there. There's some kind of he's like the, the Spanish flu, which I thought was quite interesting that they picked the Spanish flu and actually highlighted it and had masks on and it was almost like that sort of you know the times we live in. Do you know what I mean? It was I thought it was quite clever. But I think he's had the Spanish flu and then it's just made him a vegetable. I think as well. I think it was actually obviously shot in the pandemic, so that kind of ticked the boxes that why they had so many people in masks and stuff like that. Which I thought was quite clever, a way of getting around it. Yeah, really, really good. Not much not much of a cast in this. It's like her, um, her two parents. There's like a a, sist- a sister-in-law who sort of pops up every now and again. And um, then her so-called boy, so-called husband who's away in the war. And a, and a little bit of a love interest. I mean, mm. she has a real fascination with the, the arts as we sort of learn from X. Um, and she has these, it explores her sort of innocence, but as well as a like weird sexual sort of awakening maybe, or sexual tendencies that she's got. They're like explored in a really weirdly dark way as well. Dry humping a scarecrow in the middle of fucking film. <laughs> so weird. What I quite like though, is that, do you know in X, she talks as if she's been all over Europe. And entertain the troops. And I thought she'd gone. And I thought at some point in the film, she was going to jet off somewhere. Or someone was going to take her away. When actually, it's all bollocks. You know, it's actually like she's obviously still in this fantasy land that she's actually been that star and has danced all over and all this type of stuff. I thought it was really like clever because again, he just didn't really, even though he knew where I was going, he didn't really know where I was going. It was, it was, it was, it was quite good. And that fucking crocodile, Jesus Christ. The cro- yeah, well, yeah, because the crocodile obviously couldn't be alive, probably when the movie shot but like there, there was alluded to but yeah well she feed a feed a goose to it at the beginning it's no, that's quite, that's quite yeah. dark um and they're just like weird little performances to like one cat and obviously the farm's failing um and there was like you know little parallels lots of like decay you got like a nice um table scene sort of like with Te- texas james Bond massacre and stuff like that which was quite uncomfortable to watch some really weird uncomfortable moments in terms of like her relationship with her father it was like the, the way that's I mean like that's the thing that's a great thing about the film is that you're watching this like you, you're almost like am I watching this wholesome family drama and it's nothing bad's happened yet but she's naked in the bath with her dad who uh, is and then, like is he enjoying it is he not that's like the whole like a ma- is, uh, there's a point where our mum comes in the bathroom and sort of looks at both of them and then wheels her dad away. Like that's enough of that for you, oh, <laughs> young man. <laughs> yeah, it's really uncomfortable. But there's like a real calculated naivety, like to her sort of personality, and like you feel kind of you do feel sorry for her. Um, there's two really stark moments in this movie. One is a monologue, which was like nearly eight minutes long um and it was just like that's why when matt says like about this this oscar worthy performance totally that was like a yeah arc de triomphe um but the most unsettling thing in the whole movie and matt told me to stay put because i was going to get out of my seat was watching the end credits and her just what i don't know Gurning. <laughs> <laughs> Try, trying to smile. I guess the direction was try and smile for as long as you can and then see what sort and whatever happens, happens. And it sort of like, it looked like it was hurt at one point. She was crying as well. <laughs> she didn't blink the entire no. thing. That was like six minutes long. All that. Oh, God. She's just. Yeah, and I've never seen her in anything. I know she has been in stuff. But before X, 
didn't really know anything about her. And now suddenly, like, what well, after watching X, she was this, a model before all this, right? Well, she, was in, so. she was in a movie with Anna Taylor Joy. I know that much. I can't think it's Emma. I think she was in. Well, lads, I know I'm already going to talk about, but wait, you see her in Infinity Pool. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen some clips. But yeah, I do want to see it. I have one question, though. Her husband, who's away, and the husband that returns at the end when it all go, after it all's all gone, Pete Tong. Is that the same husband? In... It's the same character. It's not the same actor. Yeah, yeah. But it is, yeah, it's, it's it, it, is, it is the husband. So after he comes back from the war... He de- they definitely stay and they definitely are on the farm for the rest of their lives, right? Yeah. It's so just... I think as that I think that's the 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 whole point of the whole um the the smile and the not blinking at the end. It's almost like she's sort of like almost like piercing into his soul, going everything's fine. Whatever you're looking at here doesn't really exist. You know what I mean? Just stay with me and I need you and everything. We're all good. We're all good. We're all good. Please don't like shout or scream or anything like that. Um, and I think he just. I think he does. He just stays with her because he. I think he might blame himself for the whole event because he left her. And quite they, they allude that they all know she's a bit fucking nuts. <laughs> um, but yeah, that that six minute monologue, Paul, or eight minute monologue, whatever it is, it, um, Jesus, you just kind of take your eyes away from the screen when she's on it. It's incredible. It just abs- it blocks everything out and just absorbs you in. And the fact that she wasn't nominated for anything, forget the Oscars, but like anything is, did anybody watch the film? Because it's it's just an incredible piece of acting. Oh my God. So, yeah. The, w- the woman she was opposite as well, her sister-in-law, like the, obviously the going to her and her sort of enduring that conversation. <laughs> and then what's going to happen next? <laughs> I mean, what Matt? What do you think of like like the deaths in comparison to X? Yeah, I mean, it was uh, there wasn't a great deal, was there? I mean, I think the thing is, it's a, it's a totally different film, kind of. It's like, do you know what I mean? It's 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 a you know, it's a one piece, and it? it's it's about her, it's about her character and finding out all this information. Um, but yeah, I like I like the deaths. They're really cool. Like like really shot really well. I liked it. It's really good. Really, really cool. Definitely one to go and sort of explore and watch. And uh, and yeah, we got Maxine coming out later on in the year, which is following on. <laughs> this is this is the trilogy, you know. I mean, this. Do you know it's set in the eighties as well, lads? It's like proper. Oh, it's well eighties with that title. That was so he's going to dial it up to hundred, I think. But he's got a lot of. He, he set himself up for a right finale. Oh my god! I, I, I'm a big fan. Big fan of Ty West. I, I just don't think he's going to get enough credit for for what he did. Completely like it's a math, uh, for me, honestly, it was shot for shot, just incredible, absolutely incredible. What what a great film! Yeah, definitely one for go and watch um, and enjoy. Um, please just go out and find it. I mean, it had a short run at the cinema. Um, it will be available on uh, streaming quite soon x was quite quite quickly as well so um it's a great little companion piece for x and on its own merit it's just ridiculous go see the movie how how about rating it what would you what would you rate this bad boy matt you want to go first uh i'd rate it nine breaths out of ten for me yeah i'm saying nine nine out of ten well lads i'm gonna go ten yeah I abs- honestly, I absolutely love it. And if it's not in my top three films this year, in year, not even just horror, I'll be amazed. I fucking loved it. It was amazing. I so would have given it I would have given it a ten, but there wasn't a necklace in sight, so <laughs> Yeah, what yeah. <laughs> <It's a> shame. <laughs> Jesus. Didn't, didn't get a ten for the cows, so poor Daisy. <laughs> in that case, maybe we should move on. Right, let's move on. Uh, right, so we, next episode, um, we may be, <laughs> may be talking about nope. the makeup. Nope. <laughs> I think what you're going to say is a no. And don't mention his name. We may be uh, talking Before about... Before the Mir- <laughs> <laughs> We may be talking about Mir Goff again. 
let's put it that way. <laughs> we shall see. Right. Okay. Without further ado, let's move on to our something to scream about. What do you want from me? Why don't you run from me? What are you wondering? What do you know? Why aren't you scared of me? Why do you care for me? When we all fall asleep, where do we go? Okay, we are getting down to the final two years of In Search of Darkness Part 3. 88 and 89. Fucking hell. Okay. Let's barrel through these fucking movies then. Find out which ones these boys have watched. Well, the first one off the pop, Return of the Living Dead Part 2. Matt, you must have seen this bad boy. A million times. Got it on VHS. Fucking love it. Great poster. Probably. I not. haven't seen it. So oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we've done the first one, haven't we, for the, for the um, pod, but we haven't done the second. Yeah, this is the one where the director shit the bed, basically. He sort of, he, he wasn't really interested in making it. Um, it was almost like a weird kind of direct remake in, of it-ish. Not really. I think there's a bit of suburbia in it. I Out of all three of them, I'm still, I think they've all got their charm. But Return of the Living Dead 3, <laughs> for many, many reasons. It's just so out I there. I don't know. Number two, it's like a bit, it's, it's kind of, I think I relate to it more because there was a kid in it. Campy, it followed, isn't it? it followed the kids more, and uh, I thought uh, I quite liked it because of that. But yeah, I loved it. I thought it was brilliant. Yeah, I'm a big fan of this. I got the tri- I got the trilogy on uh, DVD. Very love these love this series. Um, next, we got Sorority Babes in the Slime Ball Bowl or a Rama. I've seen this like titled. I think it's on Amazon Prime. I think it's on YouTube for free. I need to watch it. I, it's, it's just I think I'm just gonna go out and watch it. An imp, bad wi- bad wishes, and uh, a, a character called Juki. No, it was an actor called Juki Flieswater, who plays. It is so <laughs> so bad. You have seen it? You will love it. Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah. Oh fucking hell! But you will love it. You will <laughs> yeah. love it probably. It's bad though. It's bad. The Lena Quinty like pops up and just fucking yeah. ass as like another punk sort of character. It looks batshit. Paul, definitely up your street. Oh, yeah, well up my street, yeah. Damn right. <laughs> Love a good imp. <laughs> um, uh, next is up is a, a movie that I haven't seen. Where's Craven? Another movie. And I'm still not sure. It's one I've just kind of avoided. I don't know if I can be prophet. The Serpent and the Rainbow. Matt, this is a zombie movie, in effect, like which explores like the z- voodoo size of um, the zombie mythos. Is this the one with Hugh Grant in it? Nah, it's Sam Neill. Is it Sam Neill? Sam Neill. Is it Sam Neill? Or Bill Pullman. It was Bill Pullman. Well, maybe yeah. I haven't seen this then. I'm Bill... quite intrigued with this one, Paul. Yeah, but I, I've always avoided it. I don't like the title, Serpent and the Rainbow. It doesn't really jump out at me as one that I'm like that. But it's Wes Craven, so it's got to be good. But it's, I feel that if I watch it now it's good, and I haven't watched it, it's going to be dated. That's what I, That's my gut. But yeah. it's, it's a zombie You're movie. on that precipice. I thought a lot with it, these films. You're on that precipice of the 90s, aren't you? It's like, it's all, it is like the turning of the era where you like, does it feel this, that, that 90s, 80s just aged very well. Yeah. They tend to age very well. But towards the 90s, there's sort of that tendency. The 90s films don't really, the 90, it was like 90 to 92, and they don't tend to age that well. Like even if you watch like Science of the Lambs sort of again, it's sort of like, I don't know. It's a great movie, but it's still like the way it's shot. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, Matt, Sleepaway Camp 2. So I've got two and three, thanks to Matt, to watch. This one didn't didn't include, you know. Well, as someone who hasn't watched Sleepaway Camp 1, um do I need to fucking watch it anymore? Because it spoiled the fucking. I was like, oh well, never mind. <laughs> yeah, but then I've seen. Then That's I've a seen... shame, that. That's a real yeah. shame. <laughs> I mean, she, had, she had a lovely cock. <laughs> Felicity, Felicity Rose. Um, and <laughs> she didn't appear in this one. Someone else did. Bruce Springsteen's sister. Sister, yeah. Oh. 
plays the uh, uh, the character, whatever her fucking name, or his, her, them, their name. <laughs> Horror comedy with quippy one-liners. Look pretty good. Some of the kills look really good. I don't know. I'm well up for this. It, I'll have a few love, like cheesy one-liners. So that's good. Uh, don't panic. Is any of you seen this one? Nope. Nope. Ouija board demons and shit is what I wrote for this one. <laughs> Not really bothered that much to talk about this one. I think we'll move on. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't look great, did it? <laughs> nah. Lady in white. I thought this this sort of this is right on Matt Street. Gateway. It's like a ghost and a weird child killer. You must love this one, Matt. I've never I've never seen it. Never seen it. It's one of them which I've seen the DVD cover a million times and never really. It's never really pulled me in to go. You must watch this. And I, to be honest, when I was watching it, I was a bit like, ugh. But I couldn't really get just about what it was about. Hmm. Uh, right. Uh, yeah. Dream Demon, which has Timothy Timothy Spall and Jimmy <laughs> Neil. Jimmy Nail. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely got to do this one, lads. Hundred <laughs> percent. Special effects look look epic. And it's got those two women who's like I can't remember she was on the thing, wasn't she? I can't remember her name. Um, but she's always playing like a badass sort of like like final girl and stuff like that. So yeah, Dream Demon is definitely one. If it's got Timothy Spall in, I'm all up for that. And he looks like his character in Harry Potter. Yeah. So. And Jimmy Neal. Yeah. <laughs> Matt, have you, Matt, have you seen Monkey Shines? No, I haven't. No, I want to see it though. It's like well, another one like Mark. Like it it looks really fucking good. Monkeys, telepathy, and like everyone starts getting killed by the monkey. Like another, there's a real, there's a there's, that's obviously the only monkey that they're allowed to get on sex. It's like the fucking hang the hangover monkey, isn't it? That little capuchin monkey. The friends like, monkey. Friends monkey, probably the. Wow, so. I just like think it. it's just funny. Like obviously, just being a Romero film, it's yeah. like you'd expect. A zombie to rock up. Monkey so Matt has it on VHS. That is a very 90s um, sort of VHS. It ain't, no, it's, ain't it's, got on, that. it's on Orion. You can't get more 90s than Orion, man. Yeah, man. It looks like Lawnmower, man. The tagline, the most spine-chilling movie since The Fly. See Deep. no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. Deep within the human mind, there are primitive instincts locked away. Someone has just found the key. <laughs> mm. Fucking weird. Um, yeah, it's an 18, though. We love an 18. Um, Black Roses. Heavy metal, heavy metal, monsters, and boobs. Never heard of it. Again, after we discussed like the last episode where most of the movies from that era are like in that heavy metal era, I want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> The next one we I, I think is just a must, isn't it? If we've done uh, what we have done on the uh, on the podcast in the past, but it's called the Brain. Um, this looks special. This looks incredible. I need this. I need this in my life. Um, brain going ra- brain going around killing people and with lines such as "food for thought." I mean, what more could you want? Um, <laughs> I was sat right watching it, and I was like, Jesus, that looks like one of them uh, toys. You know them? And then it came on. Yeah. <laughs> um, what was the movie we watched, Matt, that had the other brain in it? The little eyes. Brain damage. Brain damage. Yeah, very remind me a little bit of that. But obviously the brain's massive. Sort of almost <laughs> like, it's almost like the blob. It just keeps getting bigger. They do a, a wonderful um, version of this on 101 f- uh, Films. It's like a real nice, a bit like um, the Tammy and the T-Rex box like Ooh. collection of this movie. It looks, it's re- really looks good. I think I'll have to make a purchase. Loved it. Looked at really cool. Next one's fucking weird, though. Howl of the Devil. Uh, it's either Mexican or Spanish. I can't remember which. Um, and it's it's sort of like, it's not really a werewolf movie. They're sort of, it's like he's changing into like weird monsters, like a werewolf, Frankenstein, 
yeah, it's just it, this just looked really bonkers. This one, it's, it's almost like Italian dubbed, isn't it? It's almost like this. The, the the documentary went through a phase of like including like Asian horror, and then like towards the end of uh, the eighties, then they went on to sort of Mexican Spanish horror. It's just it's just weird. It's like really low budget. I don't know. I'm not really sure about that one. Right, moving on to nineteen eighty nine. Things. Vino. <laughs> this is like troll bird pan, like bird demic and all that sort of stuff. Is it something that we I haven't heard? We make things by ourselves now, lads, and it will be better. I think we could give it a go. Little weird, <laughs> little weird ants that sort of like are like killing. I don't know what was to say. It's just a really like low budget, have a go sort of DIY movie, really, isn't it? I don't know, but it is. But this this last list, I've not even heard of art after this. They're really deep, deep cuts. Really were compared to the rest of it. Mm. It, did really feel, it did feel like they were like scraping the the proper bottom of the barrel towards but, the end. Like well, we're going we're going into the nineties. That's probably why, isn't it? It started yeah. to, to kind of deteriorate. Mm. Shock it. Next one was shock and dark. Uh, Venice creature feature. And I thought this is like here's your here's your alien sequel that you always wanted, right? Military, <laughs> um, you got military, you got Terminator in there, you got aliens in there. I mean, we, you keep whinging both of you about wanting to see another alien military movie. This is what you need to put onto the podcast. Yeah, all my dreams came true, Paul. To be honest, I, I love the fact that they couldn't release it because it was it was subject to getting the the shit sued out of it by everybody. <laughs> what was it called again? It was called Shocking um, Dark. Shock and Dark. Had, this is the one that had like 65 different titles for it or something like The Terminator. And uh, it was not right. not ever released in America for ages because it was just fear of being sued because it just basically had like a Terminator ripoff in there. Well, the, covers, the cover of it says Terminator 2. Yeah. 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 That's why they were going to. That's another title for it. It was like there was just so many different titles. <laughs> Amazing. It was one of those ones which was Italian that sort of like got um, badly dubbed, I think. I want to see it. Yeah, defo. Uh, Santa Sangre. <laughs> Fucking what? The, the this is the one with the kid, the kid, the kid that was being tattooed. <laughs> like he was about eight, and he was getting this massive chest piece. <laughs> I mean, I it. <laughs> it's like a. I described it as like a Mexican Argento basically like some kind of surreal mess <laughs> That's why I, I, don't know. I don't know not one that i'm rushing i've never seen fright night 2 fright night 2 it looks it's a classic it does look really good as a sequel and it's I, like bring, brings back the originals i've seen fright night 2 and i never i can't remember it i mean i saw it when i was little like a kid because i always remember the trailer of the Werewolf losing his fingers in the um, in the window, and uh, we got it from the video store, and I can't remember it being that sexy. <laughs> if I'm honest. <laughs> so yeah, let's do that one again. <laughs> yeah, it did look pretty naughty, didn't it? But I don't know if it actually will be. <laughs> Probably not. But look, cool monster hunting. Um, this is never heard of this. But again, this feels very nineties. Relentless, um, a film with Judd Nelson as a maniac, a maniac slasher dude. I mean, Judd, Yel- Judd Nelson, yes. But I don't know. Apart from that, I was just like, just looks like, I, I don't know if I was saying we're running a mill, but. Generic 90s thriller. <laughs> generic 90s thriller vibe. Yeah. That's what I got from it. Yeah. But with Judd Nelson, that got to be quite slightly different, maybe. don't know. But it had a big budget. It's that start of like, sliver and basic instinct maybe that sort of era that's what it felt like who knows um matt obviously we love puppet master yes we do there's been like 13 of them and (laughs) and the the first one started in 1989 which is quite late considering considering there's been so many Mm. and we've done puppet master for the podcast already or the 13 Nights of Alvira, my puppet master. Oh, yes. I forgot about that subtitle. Mm. 
but yeah, I love Puppet Master. I love all the little characters. I got you a little little blade, didn't I? Or was it a little yeah. blade for, yes. for, for Christmas? Yeah, we like that. Love, love, love it. Anyone? No, the next two I'm not really bothered about. The Black Cat, which was some kind of like very stylized horror. Not my, not my cup of tea. Didn't really think much of that one. And then another Mexican horror movie called um, Grave Robbers, which had some good special effects in it. But again, I don't know if I'm running to go and watch these sort of things. <laughs> I suspect you've seen the best special effects in a little bit of the... <laughs> I, feel, I feel you're right. I feel you're right. Yeah, but then it's all wrapped up nice in a bow, isn't it? Oh, I did enjoy this documentary. Again, it's nice like looking at it and revisiting a load of... Uh, horror movies. I mean, it's, the, my favourite year was '86. I think definitely. There's a lot. Yeah, it was immense. So '86 and '87, I just want like literally all of them. I, to be fair, I think it's lined up quite a lot of movies from the vault for us. To be honest, hasn't has it? There's a lot of shit that I haven't seen. Well, the hundreds that I haven't seen, but you guys haven't seen it either. So, it'd be quite I, interesting um, forward. So I'll send them on the uh, group, but I. Um, found pictures of all the almost like a checklist of all the movies from all three um documentaries so maybe we should i'll send them on to you matt and maybe you can put them on put that on our social media because there's mm-hmm. a there's a lot there to be able to sort of go in and i'm like ah oh, watched it watched it watched it need 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 and i like that sort of thing <laughs> so i'll forward that on to you boys right that was a lovely four five week discussion on in search darkness free i guess we won't be doing it again unless they venture into the 90s which i'm sure they they will because they seem to make a mint out of this and it's probably quite simple to set up and do we'll, we'll see if they do go into into the 90s horror who knows right let's move on to our move from the vault Paramount Pictures cordially invites you for a weekend getaway at the party to end all parties. This is the craziest party that could ever be. <coughs> Turn on lights because I don't want to see you. <coughs> April Fool. Welcome to my home and lifestyles of the rich and undeserving. Wrong. Oh, cheers. Join eight privileged guests who are just dying <laughs> to have fun. <laughs> wow, what is this, the bridal suite? You like it? The ladies. I find it useful. Right. The gentlemen. <laughs> we, we, we did, on the first date. The young. Well, basically, I possess a, an essential lack of seriousness. <laughs> and the restless. Such a jerk. Everyone is having such a good time. It's scary. Ah! Is something wrong? You're dead. Radio is blasting. Someone's knocking at the door. I'm looking at my girl. Ah! She passed her door. Nikki! I'll see ah! someone in the door. Ah! I'll never see the door. Don't know what it is. I don't want to ah! see the door. April Fool's Day. Get ready to party till you drop. So this episode's movie from the vault is 1986's April Fool's Day. Nine college students staying at a friend's remote island mansion begin to fall victim of an unseen murderer over the April Fool's Day weekend. But nothing is as it seems. Sorry. Or I just want to it seems as it seems. <laughs> I remember this being much better than this time around watching it. Just going to put it out there. But carry on. Who wants to go first? Butch, you go first. Line me up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Loads of cheesy one-liners. The film's kind of like as it says april fool's day and there's like a there is like a point horror book called april fool's day which i remember reading as a kid teenage horror it's way better than this 
Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I like the thing is I've always seen the the little poster with the woman, and it looks really kind of dark, and I like this premise. Um, and it pulled the rug right from underneath me, and I just wanted to think. I was like, this has got a cult following. People love this, and I'm like trying to get my head around if, if I did. It's got Biff from uh, Back to the Future in it, so that's a plus. Ever known as Tom Wilson, but yeah. <laughs> well, no, 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 lots of like weird special effects, which were well, Amy bad. Steele in it as well. Who? Amy Steele. Who's Amy Steele when I'm at home? Oh dear. I can't remember. Go on. Hit me. Friday the 13th, part two. Okay. Good. Amy Steele, isn't it? Final girl in it. I, I quite like her. I think she's good. A lot of tomfoolery, as the title expects, and you, I, I expected more mutilator. Mutilator. Uh, and mutilator. mutilator. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. Re- I didn't really get that. Um, did you? Did you think? Well, I thought though that that Kevin Bacon must have gone for that guy's part, and well, not gone for that guy's part. And gone, no, I don't want anything to do with this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Big time. Thank God for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he dodged a bullet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, go on then, Paul. What do you think? Oh, I just thought it was shy, lad. Sorry. <laughs> if that's, that's my one sentence. No, look, it it just, I thought it took ages to get going. I took ages to get going. Then there were no real kills in it. And it was kept going on and on and on. And then the reveal at the end, which I, I didn't get it. But it didn't. I didn't go. Oh my god! When really I should have went. Oh my god! It was just yeah, like. Oh. Uh. I did when I watched it. I think I watched this when I was really young, and I just thought it was a run of the mill kind of slasher, and I must have been so naive because the I remember the reveal being like, oh my god, that's genius. But uh, if I've uh, really thought about it, the, the, the the answer is in the title for Christ's sake. Yeah. You know what I mean. I thought it was a dream sequence. I thought they'd gone into a funny dream sequence. And I was like, what have you just done to me? I don't understand what's going on. And I'm like, oh, and then I clicked. And I'm like, really? It was all a ruse. <laughs> you, have the, the, you have the college thing. I just thought this whole setup was just a bit, it was just really flimsy the way they handled it. Like, the, it just, you sort of, it just went from scene to scene. And you were a bit like, well, what is, what's really going on? Yeah, like it doesn't the, really move along, does it? No, no, and it did. Like you had the ferryman and the 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 guy whose eye came out of his head when he got squashed off the boat and all that type of stuff. And I was like, oh, well, that was quite a decent bit of special effect. I thought that was quite cool, quite decent. Yeah, but they didn't. He, they left the film right, and it was like they're gone. There was no reason to bring them back. You know what I mean? It, it, it wasn't. I didn't feel it was clever their part in it and all that type of stuff. Um. And then, like the whole the whole substitution of Mufti, Mufti or Muffy's sister, Mufti and Buffy, Buffy. Yeah, Mufti and Buffy. <laughs> Their whole substitution thing. I was just like, um, obviously, as you're watching it, going, well, I don't, I don't know what's going on, but she's obviously the killer. <laughs> yeah, which is too like, obvious. But I mean, the old movie premise. For anyone who's sort of still listening to this conversation, um, it's April Fool's Day and they do a lot of gags and they play a lot of gags on each other and they do that a lot. And um, this is just one long gag, basically. They go to an island and it's like they start getting picked off one by one, but are they getting picked off? And, I, and you never really have any clue that it is a gag. And it was, I don't know. It's, it, 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 I'm sure it fucking scuppered somebody out there. I'm sure someone. Oh yeah, my god, that did. was bloody was good. Because <laughs> I, 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 I the when you were six year old. <laughs> Literally, I remember it being like unless I watched a different April Fool's Day, I don't know, but I remember it being a lot better than it was. Um, but yeah. But again, man, it probably was when you were younger. Like it probably just has not aged well at all. Like we live in a world of like. You know, Shyamalan twists. You know what I mean? Like, or but it like... was, it was like, t- like I said, it's like jackassery. Like it, everything was a joke, and I think they did that very early on. And maybe that's the whole point. It's like they, it's like with the knife, the knife play. 
and I'm going to fucking play with a knife. And then boom, oh, it's in a knife. And then it's like, oh no, it's not real. Oh, this isn't real. And oh, well, this is a joke on a joke on a joke. And it's like, oh, fine. And, it, and it's escalating throughout the movie. I kind of, you know, you can kind of look at it that way. And it, maybe it's a bit clever. It's just that the jokes keep on getting bigger and bigger. But then you're like, oh, they all just died. But then, I mean, there were some creepy bits in it. The bit with the like, where they were, were fell into the well. Yeah, the well bit was probably the best bit of the film for me. And the the, un, the snake wasn't meant to be there. Ooh, it could have killed him. He shit his pants. That was funny. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was just all a bit mediocre. Like, but again, a, a slasher by numbers, which wasn't too awful. Um, nothing like I would have gone. I was going, oh, it's not as good as Mutilate. I was comparing. It wasn't anything like massive. And then I suppose the biggest diversion is the fact that none of the fucking kills in the whole movie was done. It was just like special effects, which I'm like, yeah, okay. And then poor matey boy, I thought he was, see, what was it? There was a movie oh, that I told you about. It was like, it was set in Russia. I can't remember what it was called. It was like some um, influencer dude and he was going to Russia and it was all like sore and escape room. And right at the end of the movie, he comes out and he beats the shit out of the main guy and stomps on him and kills him. And then everyone's there and they're all in on it. He's so they, they put him through the ringer. They're all in on it. And he ends up killing the fucking main guy who set it all up in front of them all. <laughs> and it's like, I thought maybe if they did that in April Fool's day where, you know, the bloke comes out and he's like, ah, I can start fucking killing every killing him right in front of him. And it's, they're like, whoa dude that might have been that might have upped it <laughs> yeah. million percent agree with paul i was literally like you had the opportunity to like you've either pushed somebody over the edge where they've actually killed somebody to defend themselves because they think they're in real danger or like and they did it it's obviously after the reveal where it's just a big prank the the lass who owns the house or her house goes upstairs and she's like chilling out afterwards and then another one of them like slashes her throat and you're like oh but then it's oh, April Fool's Day and she's fine. That was the chance. If someone went and killed her then and said April Fool's Day and she was dead and then it ended the film, it'd be like, oh, oh my God, like, oh, you know, but they didn't. It's just like, hey, here's another gag. And then that really weird music at the end of the film. <laughs> did it, did it, did it, did it. It's like, what? Yeah, and I, don't yeah what, what, like, I don't care what anyone says. A jack in a box ain't fucking scary. The whole wig at the end. You're just like, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. It just didn't really do anything for me. Yeah, like, it was mega, mega slow. It needed it needed something a bit more than than what it was for me. So, I tell yeah. you another standout moment that, you know, in a film of not very many. But, um, you know, the bit with the picture with the eyes cut out and it's supposed to be a head behind <laughs> it. I thought that was quite good. And, 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 I, and we're being pretty bad on it because it, because also... Compared, to, if you compare it to any other horror, like like these where the rugs have been pulled out, this is unique. It is very unique. There's, I can't think of anything else that's like I can think of examples where at that time, was, yeah, yeah, it probably was unique. like the the bait and switch. Like, ah, uh, we fooled you, but then then they do it again. So quite clever how they you really think about it. Okay, they did it and then they do mm. it again. I wish they'd have gone like I wish they'd have sort of shown. I know no one dies, but had a bit more gore and a bit more, oh, he's dead, rather than just an off-screen, oh, he's in trouble now, he's in trouble now. And maybe seeing a couple of the characters see them die, you know what I mean, rather than go, oh, well, they're not here anymore, they must be dead, like, oh, but, a head I, in yeah, the Yeah, but I think that they said, that they, it, I think it would have been a bit hard to do with not yeah. having an actual killer. Yeah, but I don't know, like, you can do, like, if you're running away from a murderer and there's blood splurting, you know what I mean, you're not going to be taking too much notice of if they're mm. dying or not there's plenty of films have done that so mm, yeah. I, I don't know i just I thought it was a bit of a missed opportunity for the the idea they had i like the premise like but it was poor delivery for me it needed something it needed like that moment where it goes too far the joke goes too far and somebody goes fucking mental and becomes the bad guy and that, that sort of for me would have worked i think yeah like the noose, the noose is in the post, and you think, "Where's the noose?" 
And I know the guy was sort of hanging. But I thought... Yeah, that he was, was hanging. Good. His arms and legs were tied up. <laughs> <laughs> How the fuck did he get out of that one? Ah, uh, they were, yeah, some movie yeah. magic. Let's do some Matt's facts because yeah. I'm a bit of uh, one and truly nailed that one in the round. Thanks, Indy, for picking that one, my son. <laughs> Technically not my pick, but there you go. All right. Anyway, um, so while the crew was lighting a scene, Deborah Goodrich began reading Cosmoto- Cosmopolitan Questionnaire uh, to her co-stars, which elected a huge conversation that caught the attention of director Fred Walton. A few, de- few days later, Walton handed Goodrich the magazine and a new set of questions, Dirty Pervert, and asked the actress to improvise a scene which would wind up in a final cut. Um, the cast assembled at a hotel in Vancouver, British Columbia, just prior filming and begun hanging out to build their rapport and hone their characters to make them more believable that they were actually friends. At the film's beginning... Griffin O'Neill's Skip character is blamed for a prank turned accident that leaves ferry, a ferryman disfigured. Get this right. In a bizarre case of life imitating art, O'Neill was indicted on uh, is it indicted on manslaughter charges following a year uh, uh, in the following year after the film uh, for a drug-induced boating mishap that resulted in the death of Francis Ford Coppola's son, Giancarlo Coppola. What? Bloody hell. <laughs> That's it, isn't it? It's better than the film. I know. The right film about that. Um, director Fred Walton commented in 2016 in an interview with uh, Daily Dead that when they began shooting the dinner party scene, there was no collective energy whatsoever, and the scene was flat. When they broke for lunch, Walton scolded the cast and then returned to the film's um, scene and everybody stepped up their game. Um, Lena Quigley was originally cast as Muffy slash Buffy, um, but she had to turn down the role due to scheduling conflicts with the return of the living dead. And the last one... She made the right pick. You might. This might shed a little bit of light, this one. The film originally had a much longer and more twisted ending. In the original script, after Muffy reveals the whole weekend was a setup, the guests leave except for Rob, Kit, Chaz and Nikki, who sneak back to the house to prank Muffy for revenge. However, when they return, Skip cracks and attempts to kill Muffy in a jealous rage. Rob jumps in and saves Muffy, killing Skip in the process. This ending actually was filmed but did not make it into the final cut as the studio opted for a more upbeat conclusion. As this ending is not, is identical to how the book plays out. All right. There you go. There's your answer. Look. Yeah. So they could have made it. Could have, would have, should have. That, that one scene could have changed it from a one breath out of 10 to a two breath out of 10. <laughs> 100% increase. I don't know. It's, middle of the road for me <sighs> hard pressed to give it a five probably more of a four for me yeah yeah so it's, it's a long it's, it was a bit of a slog to be fair and um because i had tom wilson and i'm going to give it an extra star so i'll probably go i'll probably just get edge to five stars fair it's, it, i think it's, it's it's a recommendation maybe you could watch it it's just like it's not a must watch but yeah i know go. what you're saying what are you saying? Well, I'm going to go three breaths out of ten. <laughs> See that coming. Yeah. Oh, was <laughs> and may I add to that as well, to Matt's facts at the end? I think this is the only move from the vault that we've done with zero kills. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Two out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> okay, four out of ten. Now it gets, it gets three because Biff's in it, so. All right. Okay, that's uh, draw and last breath, four out of ten. Um, so yeah, moving on to the next episode, move from the vault. I believe, Mr. Stevens, it's your pick. It is, it is. So, so lads, um, I, I, I've wanted to watch this for for a while, to be honest. Um, and it's still in the eighties, nineteen eighty nine. But I thought we've been doing some quite serious matter over the past uh, past few weeks, so I'm gonna go a bit light lighter. And I'm going to go 1989's The Burbs. 
Oh, <laughs> good. Tom Hanks, Corey Feldman, and the wonderful Carrie Fisher. Um, I haven't seen it in so long. So, no. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I haven't watched this for years. The Donkeys, man. That's a fucking good shout. And we will just, you know, after we're learning about Tom Hanks' first horror movie, uh, first movie as a horror, I thought that was the only opportunity we would get. I forgot about him in the burbs. There you go. Joe Dante, director Joe Dante. So, yeah. Mm, excited. Okay, that is a really good pick. Genius, actually. Well done. I can't believe I've done that. <laughs> Barely, I don't think we've hardly ever mentioned that one on the pod. That's That's a really good shout. I don't own it, so I'm going to have to own it. So, yeah, good shout, boy. All right. That wraps up another episode, uh, episode 126. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Uh, moving on to episode 127, our main review is still yet to be decided. We have a uh, possible pool of uh, options for us. An like infinite that. pool, would you say? <laughs> Maybe. Um, our sum, the screen about Mr. Stevens is going to come up with in the next couple of weeks. And is also just picked out he's busy boy he's also just picked out the vault the burbs tom hanks fucking great joe Dante, love that um and there's only one more thing to say when there's no more room in hell here's another podcast